Oh, hey. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Let's go ahead and get into a recent Retro's pickup. I was just enjoying my new FM radio I got. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to a recent pickups video. I have a whole host of things here that, um, I guess over the course of a month or so, month and a half, that I've picked up that we did not get on film. Sometimes we'll swing into a random Goodwill when we're out, this and that. We'll pick up some random things, and all of these here are from those pickups, which is really cool. So I wanted to showcase some of that. And of course, let's get right into it with probably the thing that I think is the coolest out of the bunch. This is a Super Mario all pink FM radio. This is so neat. I found it at a Goodwill in the back of the store. Now, you know in the back of the store they have things that they hang up? There's random miscellaneous. I've seen everything from Barbie dolls to Game Boy cases to this radio. Um, to cables, you name it. It's, it's very random. It's hit and miss. They usually will have a whole bunch of cables, but sometimes they put things in plastic bags and then hang them. This was in um, a plastic bag hanging back there. It's all pink. Very, very cool. It actually says 1989 as a stamp on it here. Very, very cool. Complete with matching headphones. Um, what, what a cool gem. It, what's so weird about it, I think, is that Mario just, he looks completely high. I mean, that or drunk, one of the two or both. Uh, I, I've never seen, I've never seen an impression on Mario's face like this before. It's almost like he's singing or dancing or I don't even know, but it's quite funny. And I think it's a really unique piece of the Nintendo uh, gem out there. And I'm just really happy to have it. It does still work. It plays FM. It, it's crazy found this very cool uh, all red. This is for the PS3. This is a six axis DualShock 3 controller in really great shape. The joysticks are very, very tight on it and it functions as it would normally function. So it was a really cool find for $2.99. Very cool. Another thing I found out there in the wild is a, this is an Age Tech um, bass fishing, fishing rod controller for the PlayStation 1. And I love Sega Bass Fishing. I recently acquired it on uh, the PC, which is really, really great. But th the best, I think, is on the Dreamcast. It had the, the fishing rod attachment you can use on there. And of course, being the Dreamcast, that's kind of like the official port. It's like Crazy Taxi. If you're gonna play Crazy Taxi, playing it on the Dreamcast, is, it just kind of makes sense. Um, it's like the official port. Uh, I think, at least. So, But this is really cool. I love the fishing games. Oddly enough, like, I. Not really into sports games, but man, the fishing games, you wouldn't think they're fun, but it's a blast. But this was designed to be able to use with the PS1 um, on those uh, fishing games, which is really cool. Moving along here, this is Stephanie's, and we've mentioned it before. So, and actually she has a few things here that I'll show. Um, but we mentioned it on a, a previous episode, so we wanted to show it. But this is the seventh guest big box uh, complete, which is really, really cool. Um, and she found the 11th hour if you're watching our thrifting series. She found that recently, so she has kind of the complete series, uh, which we're both really, really happy to have. This is a very cool game. Next up is this really cool Snoopy Tennis on Game Boy Color. If you guys already know, Stephanie is a huge uh, Peanuts fan, so when she saw this out in the wild, she had to pick it up. We picked it up at a local game store uh, called Game Zone here. Um, very, very cool, complete and original box. Very, very neat. And uh, from what I understand, it's kind of rare. So we were really happy to find it. I believe she paid $10 for this, which I think is completely fair. And the last thing here that she found out in the wild, we actually were at Target. And guys, if you're at Target, make sure to check out the clearance aisle. Um, usually it's on the end cap in the electronics department, but you will find some really cool on sale, sometimes open box, stay away from those. But sometimes you'll find stuff they've had laying around forever, uh, super discount. Like I found uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, um, Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare rather and it was like five bucks sealed in the box um, you know like if you bought that on Steam today you're still gonna pay like 20 bucks for it so I thought that was kind of neat anyway this very very cool Dead Island Riptide this is the I think it's the collector's edition or something like that but what's cool is that it comes in this I'm trying to be really careful with it it comes in this just totally awesome 
Dead Island suitcase, travel case. Look at this thing. It looks so, so cool. I love it. Let's open it real quick. Look at that. So cool. So cool. Comes complete with the game. You get the Dead Island. Look at that. The, the bobble, hula girl. You get the Dead Island hand, severed hand, a bottle opener. And you get the Riptide key for your room, for your bungalow. Very, very cool. This is a really neat collector's edition pack here. Really, really like it. All right, let's move on here to my left. I got a stack of games here. Everything from PC to Genesis to some Xbox. So let's go ahead and go through some of that. I was at a Goodwill and of course in the CD section and I found this. This is a Pokemon battle coin game and it has three coins in there, which is really neat. Oddly enough, I don't know how to play the game, but it definitely has the coins inside there. And it shows all the rules and it talks about them inside here, which is really, really neat. And I saw them just randomly in there and I, want, I decided to pick it up. Very, very cool. 4x4 Evo 2 on PC, which unfortunately I was not able to get uh, running properly in my Windows 7 machine, but still a really cool game to have. I'll still troubleshoot that. It's always the fun of, of old PC games, trying to get them to work. Uh, NBA Hang Time. This, however, worked perfectly. I love it. I just copied all the stuff off of the disk, onto my hard drive, onto my desktop, and I just launched it and it runs, and it runs so good. This is such a great port. Probably one of my, oh man, I know everyone loves NBA Jam. I do too, grew up with it, but honestly, this is the sequel and true successor to NBA Jam, and I gotta say, maybe it's even better. Whoa, I know, I know, but play it, play it. If you don't play it on 64, that's another really good port of this game. Really cool to find that. 007 Nightfire, another great, great, great game here. Um, 007 on the PC, I really, really like it. Uh, I was streaming this at one point for a little while. Should get back into doing that. So many games, not enough time. But I already own this, but when I see them out there for like a dollar, you can't pass them up. So there's Nightfire, very, very good James Bond game. Another one, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2. Already have these, but uh, whenever I see these out there, I'm like, I feel like I'm rescuing games and it feels good. Maybe that's just because I'm a crazy collector, but. Um, Hot Pursuit 2 on PC. Really, really good game there. Oh, this was cool. This is a special limited edition of Deus Ex. And I haven't ever seen this out in the wild. Of course, this did come in a big box. I'm going to assume it did. Um, but yeah, really, really cool to see that out there. Um, there was something special about it. Um, and actually, okay, so the special limited edition, it does, everything in here is numbered, which is neat. So it has a jewel case number and a trade liner number. So everything on there is numbered. So I think that's so cool. I uh, couldn't pass it up. It was a dollar at Goodwill. And here's our good old friend here, the Sega Marine Fishing. I have not played this yet, but extremely excited to try it with my fishing rod um, attachment that I have there. So very, very cool game there. Love it, excited to try it. I hope I catch this huge ass bass or whatever you're gonna, uh, fish famous spots from around the world. Oh yeah, online rankings and more. Yeah, I wish that was still working. But still really, really cool there. Uh, moving on, found these at a Goodwill, which is really neat. Out of This World on Genesis, very, very good game. I remember playing this first on the Super Nintendo and it blew my mind. I could not believe it. I felt like I was watching a movie. And anyone who's played this game back in the day, you know it, it, it really felt like you're playing a very cinematic movie. It's very cool. Out of This World. Fantastic game. It has a garage sale sticker on it. Two fifty garage sale. Oh my gosh! And I think we found them for I think it was the same price at, at a Goodwill, which is really, oh yeah, it says right there. I forgot to take the sticker off. Two ninety nine. So we <laughs> we paid fifty cents more than it would have been at the garage sale. Totally worth it though. I'm down for that. Um, next up, of course, Jungle Book. This is another game that a lot of people say is really really good on the Genesis. And I think you know there were some games that were done back in the day. Um, that were just better on Genesis, um, like Aladdin. That game is su far superior on the Genesis than it was on the Super Nintendo at that time. Of course, we had the wars going on, so it was very heated, but I agree. Um, some of those games were a lot better on Genesis. I think this was another one of them. 
Uh, Streets of Rage 3, can't go wrong with that. Very, very cool game. Love this. A great, just great beat em up game. Um, what is there to say? It's Streets of Rage, and it's really cool to have the third one, which you don't see too much out there in the wild. So, really cool to find that. Looking forward to trying that. Dr. Robotnik's Me Mean Bean Machine. Oh, say that five times fast. But this is another really cool game um, that I never really played, never got into. So I was really happy to find this out in the wild. And I think it's more like, um, not so much like a puzzle game, but almost like Tetris, Dr. Mario style, especially from how it looks. Looks like you have to put these different colored beans together. And um, I, I can't even say because I haven't played it, but that's what it looks like. So excited to try this. And uh, oh, it says right there, puzzle game. Ha! Huh. So very cool, but looking forward to playing that. Mean Bean Machine. And of course, Streets of Rage 2, which is really neat. So whoever dropped these off, they, uh, they unloaded their uh, Streets of Rage collection. I didn't see the first one there, but uh, still really, really cool. These are great beat-em-up games. And for $2.99, I mean, come on, get real. Just feels good to have them, you know, in the collection. PS2, Iron Man. Steph actually found this out there. She saw it, which is cool. Uh, also $2.99, never played it. But uh, looks like a possibly like a third person action uh, type game. Done by Sega, so can't be that bad. Looking forward to that. And then I picked this up Group S Challenge on the original Xbox. This game here is a uh, Capcom exclusive to the original Xbox, and that's the reason why I picked it up. I think it was $5, which I think is a fair price for it. But uh, reviews are terrible. People say the controls are really, really loose and very, very drifty. Uh, almost floaty, so that, that kind of sucks, but I'm, I haven't played it yet, um, but looking forward to doing so. Anything exclusive to some consoles like this, I'm, I'm totally in, especially being racing, especially by Capcom. I think that's really, really cool. So I'm looking forward to, to trying this game out. Group S Challenge. All right, I only got a few stacks here left. I'm going to go ahead and get right into this here. This was a Humble Bundle. Sega had a Humble Bundle that they were doing, and if you spent, I believe, $50 or more, on that, they gave you this exclusive, only available there, Sega Dreamcast shirt. And I was really, really happy to, I didn't know about it, but Stephanie had bought this for me for Christmas. And uh, it finally came in the mail, honestly, like maybe two weeks ago. So it took that long to get, totally worth it. I have not opened it up yet, but I'm going to do so right now. It's hard for me to do it because that's such a, even this, look at the sticker, it's got this little Dreamcast on there. It's just so, so cool. I'm gonna try to be careful with it. I know you might think I'm weird, but I'm keeping this, this bag because it has a cool sticker. Look, I was able to open it up and not rip the sticker or anything. <sighs> breathe with me, breathe with me. Oh, this is so cool. Oh, this is so cool. Oh gosh, yeah. This is so cool. Look at this shirt, folks. Look at this shirt. Is that not amazing or what? 128-bit GD-ROM, VR2. It's got the controller ports on the front there. Sega Dreamcast, look at that. It's like a schematic almost. VMU says down there, Hitachi, 32-bit computer, Sega copyright. Ooh, it's just so cool. Very, very cool to have this. I don't know if you can hear me. Thank you, Steph. Thank you oh, for this awesome shirt I just showed. I just unboxed it and showed everyone. It's so cool. Oh, good. Very, very cool. I almost don't want to wash it or wear it or anything. I just want to just sit there and look at it. <laughs> so cool. Okay. All right, guys. And then lastly here, this is a stack of music CDs, actually. And I went into a Goodwill on Dollar Day, and I just picked the right Goodwill because all the CDs and media... Uh, oh, gosh. This had to have been actually about two months ago when we did this. So... With that being said, I just cleaned up in the music department, and I want to show some of these. Now, some of these are pretty rare, and you don't see them too often, and it's right up my alley of what I like to collect. Um, I like to collect anything old school R&B, uh, 70s, 80s, 90s, um, anything old hip hop, old hip hop soundtracks, um, Boys in the Hood, all that sort of thing. Um, so, I wanted just to, to briefly talk about that, but let me just go through and show some of these. This is Sultry. What's really neat about this, this was a group that was um, on Motown Records, which is the same record label that uh, Boys to Men were on. They came out at the exact same time. However, Boys to Men took off, and this uh, group did not. So Motown 
pretty much dropped these guys, just shelved them, um, and and invested into Boys to Men, which is really neat. These guys are fantastic, though. I'd say equally as good to Boys to Men. And what's neat is this says it's a promo copy. It's stamped, gold stamp. Uh, promo use only, no sale allowed. It must be re returned on demand uh, uh, to copyright owner, which is really really cool. So I got an early promo copy of that. Uh, Junior Mafia, this is some East Coast awesome hip hop here. This is the same people that used to run around with Notorious B.I.G., uh, Puff Daddy, all those guys. Uh, but this is a really, really good album. This is Conspiracy, uh, and I believe it was their first or second uh, record. Maybe their first, 95. So, but really, really good stuff on here. This is a solid album all the way through. You know I love my West Coast gangsta beep. So this Mac 10 right here, this is based on a true story uh, CD single um, that had Who Bangin', uh, Take a Hit on Them Things, West Side Remix, and West Side Slaughterhouse. But uh, CD singles back in the day, you know, we'd go to Tower Records or whatever, and they would have a bunch of them. You just pick them up for a couple of bucks. They don't have those anymore. You just, you don't do it. You know, you go to iTunes and get whatever song you want. But back then, they released a CD single. They'd give you the uh, radio edit, an extended mix, usually an instrumental or an acapella. Um, this was so cool, and I love this West Coast rap, man. I love this. I grew up on this stuff. So, but really cool to have a Mac 10 single right there. Love it. I was talking about it, man. Boys in the Hood. This is a, a really, really great album. Back when artists would make songs for the movie soundtrack, and they would put that in there. So we have lots of really cool stuff on here. Um, we got Ice Cube, uh, DJ Pooh, which is um, Ice Cube's DJ. Uh, what else? Who else is on here? Um, High Five, Two Live Crew, Too Short, Quincy, uh, Quincy Jones is on here. A lot of really great songs. So this is a solid soundtrack right here. From those early, early 90s, um, um, just like gangster rap uh, culture movies. Really, really cool. Domino, you know I love that G-Funk. I collect all kinds of G-Funk stuff. This here, this is great. Uh, Ghetto Jam was a single off this album, but this whole album is really good. Uh, AFD, Ask for Days is so good. Um, Sweet Potato Pie, oh my god, that song is so good too. But this is a really, really great uh, album out of 1993. And this is an original case too because it has the sticker on here advertising the songs that are in it. Ghetto Jam, all that. So really cool to get the, um, the, the, the album with the original case. This is executive produced by Battle Cat, DJ Battle Cat, who's gone on to do so much for the West Coast scene. 69 Boys, Tootsie Roll, boom, 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 Tootsie Roll. Really cool if you know the 69 Boys. Rap version, dance version. Um, <laughs> it says Tootsie Mental, so it has the instrumental to it. How cool. Um, but really, really cool single there. Somebody unloaded their entire Bobby Brown collection while I was there, uh, and I saw it, so I picked up Dance. I picked up just a self-titled Bobby Brown. I think this is his first album. This is 80... Six, wow, 86, Dude, look at him back there. What, very, very cool. And then of course this one, I picked up this one which is called Bobby, which is a really, really good album here. I like this one a ton. Low Key, Back to the House. There's another one from these guys too that, um, that I have, but I, the jewel case is hiding in there somewhere. But if you know Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, those guys produced so many hits throughout the 90s for so many pop and R&B acts. You name it, they were on it. They were the forefathers of New Jack Swing and all that sort of thing involving jazz, chords with uh, tight drums and hip hop sounds. And I love that, I love their production. But this is the B team from Flight Time Studios. That's their personal studio. Uh, these guys would produce hits kind of for some of their B artists that they would do, but this is their solo project. And this here, Back to the House, this is really, really good. This is old, old school R&B, funk type. Uh, Jimmy Jam, Terry Loose. I mean, this is executive produced by them, so. Um, Stuff that really got shelved back in the day and nobody knows about, but um, anyone who collects all this old stuff will, will know about low key. Some really good slow jam stuff on there too. Val Bib DeVoe, what do we got to say here? Um, Poison, this was the single and probably their biggest hit ever. Uh, and this is the, the record that Poison was off of. Another one here, Hootie Mac a few years later. Um, another great album here, Val Bib DeVoe. Another CD single by Blackstreet. This is called uh, the song called "Fix," uh, which is on the same record that they released "No Diggity," which was a huge hit off that album. But in general, probably one of their biggest hits. Uh, this here has, and I love "Fix." It's on that record. It's so good. 
If you need a fix, so good. Uh, LP version, it's got, this, got a whole bunch of mixes. Uh, main mix, smooth mix, Dezo Call Me mix, main mix featuring Slash and Old Dirty Bastard. Oh, nice, okay. Uh, main mix with no rap. So, and then um, Queen Pen has a song on here too. All right, another soundtrack, one of my gr one of my greatest little chick flick movies that I love so much here. This is You've Got Mail. We've got Tom Hanks. Ah, so good. Just so good. This is such a great movie. But uh, this has some really cool songs on it. Atlantic Star, another great group out of the 80s and 90s. Had some really, really good R&B, slow jam stuff going on here. Love Atlantic Star. High Fives, Greatest Hits. Some more of that um, uh, R&B stuff. A lot of this produced by Teddy Riley, which is really cool. So you're going to he hear some of those uh, New Jack Swing uh, pop jazz elements in here. Um, this here, uh, Kissing Game, probably one of my favorite songs from them. Very, very good song there. All for One, great slow jam stuff, good RB. I swear, by the, you know, good stuff there. I don't want to butcher it too much. Silk, another great RB stuff uh, going on here. Uh, very, very good stuff, man. I mean, somebody unloaded their entire like RB collection. Like, they knew I was coming in. They're like, Heine's going to be here. Let's hit him with it. For sure. And then the last one, of course, Color Me Bad, right there. Um, this is a great little album, too, from 93. I don't think it did all that well, but still a really good album, and I love Color Me Bad. They've got so many hits, so many hits. Uh, actually, I took Stephanie to a concert over Valentine's Day, and I saw Keith Sweat and Color Me Bad, and Color Me Bad opened for Keith Sweat, and it was just such a great, great place to uh, get all those slow jams and uh, relive all that 90s nostalgia with the music, so it was very, very cool. Um, that's it, you guys, except I didn't even mention the biggest thing that's sitting out here. <laughs> uh, this is an M Audio, um, it, it's basically, it's called a key studio, but what it is, it's basically a USB um, MIDI controller. But it was sold with a, it's kind of a scaled down, uh, almost educational version of Pro Tools LE. So it's kind of a scaled down version of that, but it was sold with Pro Tools LE and this keyboard. And what's nice is that, it's not a full-size keyboard, but it's still not a mini keyboard to where you know you don't have a couple, you, you know you don't have just one or two octaves. Um, it, it's very very nice. It's light. It's portable. And I picked this up for fourteen dollars and ninety-nine cents at a Goodwill. And they sell now just by themselves for about forty bucks, which is cool. So everything works. I've tested it out. It works great. I just had to plug a USB uh, USB cable into it, and uh, we are set to go. So I found a key studio. It's really cool. It's just nice, so that I don't have to lug around any of my bigger keyboards to plug into a computer and control it. I can just take this thing with me. It's super light and ready to go, ready to rock. So, well, I hope you guys have enjoyed the video. It's been a while since I did a pickups video, so I wanted to hit you with it. Try to blaze through it quick so it wasn't two hours long. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe if you want to follow me on Instagram. It's Jason.Heine, Twitter at the EMU Review, and also the Emulator Review on Facebook. Check me out on my new website, HeineHouseEntertainment.com. That is now live. So thanks again, guys. Have a great night. We'll catch you later.